Right then guys, so we've made it back from the gym. Today was um, a pool day, so back and biceps. Uh, good session overall. Uh, actually trained fasted today for the first time in a, in a very long time. I mean generally, and I know this is called Diet 101 and I will talk about this later in the video, but generally I don't really eat anything until probably around about, well lunchtime basically, half, half 12, something like that. Um, and I trained at half 12 today, but I just wasn't hungry beforehand and I thought, well, if I'm not hungry, what's the point of eating? So I had a couple of black coffees, no sugar, um, and just went and did the session. So yeah, good session, got back home now, and what I wanted to do was, I'm gonna open this actually, uh, sugar-free energy drink, of course. So what I'm gonna do now is just talk a bit about diet, and I think a lot of people think the dieting is this big thing, it's really confusing, especially, you know, some YouTubers or the information out there can seem very, very confusing for a lot of people, um, but it isn't. It's actually really quite simple. And um, I think, to be honest, just with a little bit of guidance, you know, everyone can track their macronutrients and ensure they're taking on what they need to take on to achieve the body that you want to achieve. Um, whether that's to gain muscle, get more shredded, um, whatever it might be, um, everyone can do it and it's actually quite straightforward. Um, so anyway, so with that, let's kick off. So I've called this title, the title of this video is Diet 101. And so basically some, well, some basics to kick off with really, um, cause I want to really state this back to sort of like beginner level. doesn't matter whether you know nothing or you're quite, you know, quite a bit. I'm hoping this video will provide a bit of knowledge for everybody. So first thing is, so hopefully you can see up here, I've written down what the recommended daily allowance is in calories for the average male and the average female. That's just if they're going about their daily lives, not very active, um, well, they're not overly active anyway, uh, maybe walk a little bit at sort of their lunch break or something like that. But the average number of in, uh, calories um, to be taken in to maintain their weight would be 2,500 for a male, and 2,000 for a female. So with that, obviously, that's gonna be a big part of that, it's gonna be down to, obviously the average male is heavier, taller, there's more of a male than there is a female. Plus, men have testosterone in their body, which helps them, normally means that their metabolism is slightly faster, and therefore can get away with eating slightly more, and um, not put on more weight. So that's why males is slightly higher than female. And then at the top right-hand corner, I'm hoping again, you can see up here, I basically put what the breakdown is between protein, fats, and carbohydrates, and they're your big three macronutrients, obviously. So in protein, one gram of protein is the equivalent of four calories. This is if you're counting your calories by the day, and obviously counting how much you're taking on each of these, and you're gonna to need to do that to hit the goals you wanna achieve with your body. Fats, one gram of fat is nine calories a day, so over two and a bit, two and a quarter times what protein is. And it's also two and a quarter times what carbs is. So carbs, also one gram of carbs, it's four calories. So I think there's been a lot, of, a lot of people in the past think that, you know, the key to weight loss is cutting out all fat. And that's definitely not the case. Fat is really, really vital um, in your diet. It affects your hormones. Um, and if you start cutting out all your fats, then you probably lose your sex drive. You probably, you know, your hormones will be all over the place. So it's really not a good thing to do. Um, so I always recommend keeping them at a set um, uh, percentage of your calories for the day, uh, which I'll talk about. Um, protein, again, shouldn't fluctuate too much based on whatever your goals are, whether you're actually looking to gain muscle or cut down, there shouldn't be too much fluctuation. The big fluctuator in our diets will be carbohydrates, depending on whether you're looking to lose weight or gain weight and that is really annoying because carbohydrates are the thing that our bodies are obviously love the most want like all the time you know i'm very guilty of it you know most evenings you know especially when i've been sort of bulking or whatever i'm feeling a bit less disciplined especially in the run up to christmas you crave sugar you crave chocolate sweets um or pasta chips it's all that that sort of stuff that it's annoying because that's the thing that you need to really cut down so anyway moving on so what I want to talk about now is what the goals are. So what I've done here, I've put an example, it's a bit of a case study and it's actually really based on myself. So just for reference, I am currently, and I haven't written this on, 
I'm going to put it up here. So I am at 192 pounds. So there's a reason why I'm doing this in pounds, and it will become clear in a moment, um, rather than stone or kilos. So I am the case study in this in this instance. So the average male in 2,500. To be honest, a lot of the day with my job, etc., I'm sat behind the desk for a lot of the day, or just walking around. I walk to and from work, which is probably a kilometre each way, something like that. Um, but for most of the day, I'm not that active. It's only when I go to the gym, and I go to the gym sort of six times a week um, for 45 minutes, intense weightlifting, um, that I am active. So I would definitely say that I'm higher than the average male. I weigh more probably than the average male. I'm nearly 14 stone. Um, a lot of that's muscle, um, which obviously, again, tends to be the part of the body that uses the most energy because um, it wants to burn quite quickly muscle. So I've used, I've basically factored in, I've said that my maintenance, and this is a bit of a guessing game initially, you kind of have to play around with this, you have to just have an estimate of what you think the amount of calories your body needs to maintain where you're at. So my, I've said my maintenance is 2,900 calories. So what I'm basically saying is I'm the average male, but then I do 400 uh, I burn 400 calories whilst I'm in the gym. So that puts me at 2,900 calories. Now, for me in the past, so when I was bulking, for me to bulk up, and I've never, you can, there's two different, there's bro science way of bulking, which is like basically a dirty bulk, and it basically comes down to eat loads of protein, but you just eat as much as you can, and eat, 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 maybe 5,000 calories in one day, 4,000 another, maybe, I don't, do the 10,000 calorie challenge for another day, I don't know, but, it basically means you eat whatever you want, be chocolate, etc., etc. And generally, what ends up happening is, yeah, you get a bit bigger, uh, probably get a bit stronger because you know, there's more of you. But at the end of the day, you're going to probably get fat and gain a small amount of muscle. You know, so what I always recommend is a lean bulk. So what that basically means is, and also because if you're into your fitness, you probably want to continue to look fairly good, even if you're bulking. Um, so it basically means is your abs will probably disappear a little bit, but you're basically keeping yourself in a caloric surplus. So your maintenance is 2,900, you're in a surplus of 300 calories, so every day you're giving your body slightly more than it needs, so that helps to be able to build the muscle, when you probably gain obviously some fat as well. So that would be a bulk, and I'll come back to talking more about that in a moment. A cut, so if I want to cut the fat away, and um, leave myself, you know, see the difference between this year and last year and see how shredded I've become. So if I'm gonna start cutting, which is what I'm doing at the moment, I'm in the middle of a mini cut. So I have, so 2,900 to start, I've cut myself 500 calories off a day. So I'm in a caloric deficit of 500 calories every single day, which means my body has to burn those, um, um, will burn that plus some fat, some, glycogen stored or whatever it might be um, every single day um, in order to maintain where I'm at or to survive basically because it'll need to because it's burning that amount of energy right so this is where we come back to our macronutrients so basically all foods everything are made up of these three things protein fats and carbohydrates um, so it's important to know whatever the calories that you've set yourself are based on your goals what what of those calories are being made up from each of those three things? So what I'm going to do is start with the lean bulking option. So lean bulk, lean bulk. So for lean bulking, so what the suggestion is and what I'd always recommend, there's a lot of research out there to suggest this is definitely the case. It's not just a bro science thing, which a lot of people did initially think it is because it seems a bit too convenient. Basically, you need one gram of protein per pound of body weight. So one gram of protein per pound of body weight. And that's BW's body weight. And that's the recommendation. So I'm using myself as this case study. So I am 192 pounds, which means I need 192 grams of protein, which translates to 768 calories. So that seems like a lot, I know, 
and probably the recommendation for the average male is around about 60 to 70, maybe 80 grams, I'm not exactly sure, um, for protein a day, so that's like well over double or triple. Um, and to put that into sort of context, it's probably around about six to seven cans of tuna a day. Um, so it is a lot and it can be quite expensive as well, um, which is why I always suggest being rare, uh, fairly sort of thrifty, <laughs> to use lack of a better word, in how you get your protein on board. So protein shakes are a great source of getting protein on board and convenient as well. Um, tuna, say it's a pound a can, pretty good. Um, I always like to think if you can get 30 grams of protein for every pound that you spend in the supermarket, then yeah, that's pretty good. That is, that, that is probably what you can expect to spend. So every day I'm probably spending around um, seven pounds a day just on protein, just for the protein intake, let alone the carbs and, and uh, fats. But they tend to be cheaper anyway. Protein's most expensive by a long shot. So meats, etc. So that's the first point. Fats, so the recommendation is 15 to 25% of your calories per day, daily oh, calories, is fat. That's number one, and number two is fat. So for me, that basically means that I need to be taking on, I've said, I like to go in the middle, because I think it's, you can't be cutting your fats too low. If you cut your fats too low, then it can fuck with your hormones and um, there's just a lot of negatives if you cut your fats too low. Back in the day, like an Arnie's day or whatever, that was the, the research all suggested you need to cut fats and that was kind of what all bodybuilders did. Um, but now a lot of research says, no, it'll, you know, your testosterone count will go down, which obviously is gonna affect the amount of fat that you can burn anyway. Um, and just a lot of other hormones are massively affected. So it's an imperative part of your diet. People have died by cutting their body fat down too low in the past, so you've got to have it. And so I always tend to go for the mid range of 20%. So for me, at 20% fat implies that I will be taking on, so 640 calories which equates to um, 71 grams of fat. Okay, so basically what's left is your carbohydrates. So if we do carbs, that's the final point. And it's basically whatever's left in your diet. So what we're going to be saying is 3,200 is my goal for the day. I've already had 768 uh, calories from protein and then I've also had 640 from fat which means I have got 1,792 calories to fill of carb if you can read that I hope. <laughs> which essentially means I need to be taking on 448 grams of carbs. Doesn't that sound fun? Lots of sweets, lots of chips and all the rest of it. Much more fun than what we're going to come on to, cutting. Although what I should, would suggest, I do kind of buy into the if it fits your macros um, way of dieting, slightly bro science -y, but to be honest, give or take a fraction is of nothing really. A carb's a carb, you know, whether it comes from sweets, it comes from pasta, whatever. Some things, obviously a pack of sweets are gonna be more carb intense than other things. So, you know, in terms of feeling full for longer, I would probably suggest like a bowl of pasta is going to serve you better than a packet of sweets, you know, with the same amount of carbs in both. So that's basically where you'd be at. So what we've got set up here, for my lean bulk would be 192 grams of protein, 71 grams of fat, and 448 grams of carbs. Right, so let's flip that on its head now. So we're going to be doing the cut slide, which is what I'm doing at the moment. So I've gone down since I started my mini cuts, or 
basically the beginning of this year, the New Year, so I've been cutting for about a week. I've gone from 14 stone or 196 pounds down to 13 stone 10 as of this morning, which is 192 pounds. Most of that is going to be glycogen um, that I've lost. Not fat yet, it's just depleting my glycogen stores, which is always step one of any um, cut. So, let's talk about what we need to be taking on board in terms of our macronutrients for this cut. So what I always advocate is instead of having one gram per pound of body weight for protein, for protein um, when you're in a bulk, I say just slightly higher, just slightly higher, so it'd be 1.1 grams protein per pound of body weight. Reason being that when you go into a cut, you're going to be cutting down your carbohydrates to such a level um, that your body is going to want to go into survival mode. And in doing so, it will want to convert some of the protein that you're taking in, obviously that you want to all go towards protein synthesis, it will convert to glycogen to store in muscles as a reserve of energy, because it will basically think it's being starved um, as soon as you go below what your maintenance level would be. So that's why I always advocate slightly higher protein. So for me, that would basically mean that I'll be taking on 211 grams of protein. So even higher and um, even more difficult maybe to get on another can of tuna a day, I don't know, uh, whatever it might be, or another chicken breast. So that equates to 844 calories. just from protein. So number one, number two, it's gonna be our fats again. So as I said previously, I'd like to keep fats consistent at 20% of my diet, so 20% of my calories, 20% calories of fat, which implies that we're gonna be taking on 480 calories which essentially means we're gonna be cutting our fats down to 53 grams per day. Then finally, again, with our carbohydrates, it is what's left. So, we've got 2,400 minus our 844 minus the 480, which means we have, um, 1,076 calories left, dividing it by four for our carbohydrates, means that we're going to be taking on um, 269 grams of carbs. So not quite half, but you know, maybe 60% of the amount of carbohydrates we would have been taking, or the number of grams of carbohydrates, would have been taking on as if we were bulking. So you can expect, you know, because carbohydrates do give you energy to a certain degree, you probably expect to feel a bit more tired, not maybe have quite as much energy, which is why personally for me, when I'm on a cut, I like to keep myself as busy as I can, um, just because it takes my mind off the fact that I'm hungry or whatever, because... I tend to be one of those people that if I sit around and I do nothing, although I'm quite contented by watching films, etc., my mind will probably go towards, I really want some food right now. So probably best just to keep myself a bit more busy. With all this in mind, with all this in, and this is my eraser. Yep, brilliant, I know. With all this in mind, how are we going to track all this easily? As I said, it's more simple than you think. So we know what we what we set ourselves. This is what we need to be taking in every day to hit our goals. Brilliant. How are we going to measure this? Best thing to do this day and age, pretty much everyone has a smartphone. Download an app, and I'll flash it up here so you know what it looks like. It's called My Fitness Pal. So I'll write it up here, My Fitness Pal. And it's free, which we love. But basically, what this app allows you to do 
is set exactly those macronutrients, the number of calories you want per day, exactly those macronutrients, and you can input pretty much anything that you ever have um, into this, and it will just take it off um, your calories for the day or your macros for the day, and just leave you with how much protein, etc., you need to have left. So what I did earlier, so obviously flash up, showed you my, the chicken sandwich and the jerky that I had. I can't remember the exact macros on that, but literally in my fitness power, you can type in chicken salad sandwich Tesco into it, and it knows exactly what's in it straight away in terms of your macronutrients. And it's like something like 40 or 50 grams of carbs, I can't remember now, and 30 grams of protein, and like 10 grams of fat, 15 grams of fat, I can't remember. Something along those lines, and my jerky was like 10 grams of protein and one gram of fat and no carbs or something. Um, but it knows exactly what's in it, you know. So you can basically type in anything that you've got from anywhere, and it will just know exactly what nutrients are in it. So I definitely recommend that. Um, if you're just sort of starting your cut with just new to this, I think you can kind of, to a certain degree, sort of do it intuitively. Like if you've got you know, 100 grams or something in a packet kind of go for oh it feels like about half and that's fine you just put in like you've had a half of something into my fitness power and it'll calc it out for you it's fine um if you're taking it really seriously and when you start to get down to a really low body fat percentage you need to make sure that you aren't going over your calories for the day um you need to be really really strict on yourself then i would recommend getting like mini scales electric scales just so that you can measure everything out um with ease to be honest but that is a fantastic app and I would recommend anybody to use it in terms of tracking their macronutrients. So download it, give it a go, and see whether it helps. Oh, fuck me. So guys, that wraps up the first part of this Diet 101 two-part series, basically. <laughs> um, hopefully it's been interesting. The next part is going to be on basically supplements, what supplements I'd recommend, um, and also a bit about alcohol and what you can drink on a diet, or should, maybe not should drink, but you know, if you want to have a drink, then you can do it whilst you're dieting. I think you just need to be aware of the implications of doing so, so I'm going to be sharing that with you guys. So thanks very much for watching, I will catch you all in the next one, much love.